Well, you know, Gerard certainly picked the wrong week to be away because, now I don't use this word very often, legend. I'm joined in the studio by two absolute legends. One you'll know instantly, the other I know you'll have heard, but you might not know where, and we're going to explain that. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to John Rolls and Ronnie Tart. Hi, guys. Thank you very Great much. Great to have you. you. The beat goes on. Now, for those people who don't know Ronnie by face, take a look at this. Amongst other things, Ronnie was, of course, Elvis's drummer in the Taking Care of Business Band. And, and that's where I want to kick off. Everyone is sitting at home going, tell me what it was like. What was it like <laughs> to be playing in that band? Well, uh, we had a lot of fun. Elvis loved to laugh and make fun of himself and everybody else around him. And you know, he had a serious side, of course, but... Uh, we never knew what he was going to do next, so it, it made it fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, we've all seen those concerts where he goes, he laughs, and he oh, has fun. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and you, I guess, you just got to follow him. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But you've gone on from, from being with one big star to another big star to another big star, Jerry Garcia. You, you now play with Neil Diamond. Yeah, 33 years I've put in now. 33 years. Yeah, I'm looking for a steady gig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can imagine when you're growing up, oh, son, you know, it's not going to work. You know, that musician is not, yeah, never yeah. going to get any, You'll never make a living any longevity. Yeah, you know. yeah. um, uh, so the, playing the big gigs, what's so exciting about playing the big gigs? Uh, well, it's, it's knowing that you're, you're doing your gift, your, your gift of your talent, and you're sharing it for you know, X amount of minutes uh, and making some people happy, you know. You finally come to that realization, hopefully, in your life, you know. And it, it's the, the great reaction of, uh, as John knows, is people responding. It's that two-way thing of knowing that people are appreciating what you're doing and you're appreciating them for appreciating, and, and it goes on. It's, it's a cool thing. Well, I, I introduced you guys as legends, two legends coming together. You've come together to do the Legends Live Tour. Um, John, tell me, how did, how did that come about? We have just come back from Hawaii, where, where I used to, as a resident there, I was there for 20 years, from 1970 to 1989, 19. But um, just somebody came up with the concept of um, myself with the TCB band, of which I was very honored, uh, you know, because I was actually at the uh, 1973 show when Elvis came, uh, the boys and the boys came to uh, the arena in um, in Honolulu, the Blaisdell Arena, the big one, and um, he just came up with this concept, and I I said I'd love to do that, um, and because everybody pushed for going to Hawaii first, you know. Well, <laughs> Everybody you likes to, to go, go to Hawaii. Yeah, so go to, in fact, I'm pushing to do, if I fill in on this show again, I want to go to Hawaii just to first. do the show, John, <laughs> well, to be you quite should, frank with then you. you should, yeah. It's a great place. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, I mean, you had quite a history, as you said, you lived there, but you, um, Hawaii was very good to you, wasn't it? You, you uh, I went well. there in 1970 uh, from London. Yeah. And I did all my, most of my recordings in London, 1968, 68, 69. Mm. Then I went to um, Honolulu on, in 1970, and then I, I, I loved it so much that I stayed there. I fell in love, and I probably jeopardized a lot of my ongoing recordings by doing so, but I don't regret anything. Now, I just now, loved it. It's just because it's fun, because we can. Let's um, just go back. Beaches to, and sunshine yeah, and beautiful I go, women. I want to go back to, um, to the London time, um, because you, you did what many Kiwis just haven't managed to. We've got one doing it now, um, and we might get to we'll talk about some comparisons mm. there. But you know, you had a big hit. Well, you had more than one big hit in in the UK. What was that like? A Kiwi boy goes over there, 
and gets the big hit, goes to number three in the charts, I think. Uh, I think we went to number two. Number two. <laughs> I, 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 I'd, I'd like to say one. number one, but <laughs> didn't quite. Uh, and it was if I, if in, I only had time. In, if only had time. Um, uh, but I couldn't have been knocked out by a better guy. It was Louis Armstrong mm -hmm. oh, well, with yeah. um, Wonderful World. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Which was a reasonably large hit, as I seem to remember. <laughs> <laughs> I remember if I only had time. I was very, very I young I went to bed time. that night and I'm going, wow. Yes, I could make it to number one, but when I woke up, he was he was uh, number one, and I went uh, back to three. <laughs> and you, you were very, I mean, you we we talk in, in New Zealand about you being a you know you were our Elvis. You you were there. You you went over well, to Vegas and, and you met Elvis. And, you know, yeah, you know. well, he influenced me obviously when I was ten. So I was everybody knew I just wanted to sing. I wasn't interested in school. I just wanted to get out there on the stage. I was very 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 shy. I don't know what happened. I but can't <laughs> see that. Can you, I don't know. But I, I actually, uh, it's true, I actually used to turn around and put my head down to the wall right. behind me um, and sing all shook up. Really? <laughs> so that sort of kicked me off, you know. And I used to also do Fabian songs. I used to do, you know, Brooke Benton. But uh, yeah, all shook up was the first talent quest I won for, at the time, five pounds. Yeah. A lot of money there. <laughs> yeah, it was a, a lot, lot of money was. now. I'm not getting anything. <laughs> Ro Ronnie, an interesting thing about dramas is often they're not, um, you know, it's the guy up the back. Not quite the case with you. I, I read that, you know, you go on the stage and you get the ovation when you go on and, and take a seat, you know. So what's it like for you? Was it always like, I mean, I guess when you started it probably was, and now you're known as right, the drummer. I've got, I've got three friends, I'm going to mention them. Leighton Greening, Pat Coots, and Peter Gratton, who are all great Kiwis and great drummers, and they are so jealous that I'm talking to you today. <laughs> so, so what's it like, I just had to say that, because yeah. they, they'll be killing themselves. <laughs> what's it like for you, though, to be kind of up the back but up the front in the, in the audience's mind? Ronnie's a star. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. <laughs> I always say if you live long enough and keep doing the same thing over again, you'll just somebody will recognize it sooner or later, you know? So it's kind of what's happened over a period of years. Yeah, you just keep, as, as Elvis always said, hard working. So, and that's why the TCB thing works, so. Do, do you ever take yourself back in your mind to, to when you kicked off and when you, I mean, you didn't, I read, you did an audition, um, you know, originally for the TCB band, did you not? And, and, yeah, I did actually. So do you yeah. ever take yourself back to sort of that time when it was tough and you look at young musicians now and think, you might not think it, but I know what it was like. Yeah, yeah. You definitely have to slug through it. You know, you have to be patient. Mm. And uh, and you have a, and it's who you might meet. John and I have a mutual friend named Larry Mahoborak, who's from Sydney. And mm. he was the man that influenced and was responsible for me auditioning with Elvis. Right. Yeah. And uh, I really went down and did it. And, and we had good chemistry and worked out great. And, so far, it's done pretty well. Yeah. Ronnie, so, I heard there were other drummers auditioning too, but yeah, there were. There were other guys so that I even thought I wasn't even going to get the opportunity to play. The job. Really? Yeah, they're playing and everybody's smiling. They'd been doing it for a couple of weeks, and I'm sinking lower and lower into my chair, thinking <laughs> I've, I've flown all this way from <laughs> Dallas to get to, to go to L.A. To and the to Colonel the, says, "Oh, oh he'll yeah, be all right." And then yeah, and Elvis yeah. gave you the um, oh, yeah. last audition. What was he? What was he like, Colonel Parr? What's he, oh, what was he well, like? Well, he's uh, he had a whip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was a different guy. He he always was straight arrow with 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 me and mm. I guess the band, and uh, but he, I wouldn't say his social skills were his <laughs> greatest trait. You know? No, he, I don't he, think he really understood Elvis. I, I want to ask you. I mean, I'm not going to get too serious, but I, when you look at the demise of, of Elvis and how he how he finally went, and and you see it now with with pop stars, you see them. Probably more with social media, we see, we can see that destruction. It's kind of self-destruction happening. Yeah. Why is that? Why why does no one manage to rein them in? You know, when Britney Spears showed her, everyone's standing back, going, "She's got the money, she's got the fame, she's got the." Fame. Why can't anyone stop them? Mm. Good question. It is a good question. It's kind of complicated. Hard to do to answer. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, I think it's because. In, in, in the world of self-adoration, you know, because you begin to believe your own press stuff, you know, 
it's it's hard to trust other people right and then it's hard to believe that what they're saying is the right thing for you and uh, so sometimes those people that are not secure or not not trusting enough will only find themselves surrounded by people who just will tell them what they want to hear yeah yeah and uh, so just yeah. interrupting here yeah. it, it's almost like um cliff richard he had I had the same manager as him, Peter Gormley, but he always sort of watched out for things. Right. But with, like Ronnie was saying, with a lot of the other managers, you've got to be very, very careful. Well, it's a different industry now, isn't it? I mean, it's a for very sure. different industry. For sure. You've sold, both of you, on millions and millions of records, and now it's all about downloads. And well, the, uh, the industry is run by accountants and lawyers now, whereas back then, there used to be music people involved, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and they knew the difference. Now it's all bean counters, you know, yeah. and, I, and it's all bottom line. And I'm not, yeah. not saying there isn't talent out there. It's just it's harder for that to break and to break through all of the other layers that are surrounding it. And that's what's happened, in my humble opinion, to the music industry. And of course, there's you know there's this way of getting in that we seem to see that you know every big artist comes from a, from a talent show now, which you know talent mm, shows used to mm. be fun, but they didn't used to be the only way to get into into the music. Right, and that's what's happening now. Yeah. You know, it just seems that unless you've been on the X Factor or the Idol, you know, you're hardly looked at, which is right. it's difficult. There's a place well, for those shows, without right. a doubt, but but I still know. maintain that entertainers, uh, an entertainer is an entertainer. See, Ronnie is a drummer is both entertainer and drummer. And you won't get as good as this man. You know what I'm saying? It's like I'm not um, trying to pat you on the back, but his feeling and his concern yeah. and his beat is incredible. Well, you know, we can get to that because, because you two are together, you're, you're performing on the Legends Live tour, um, which you, st you kicked it off in Hawaii, didn't you? At that mm. very venue that we were, we were talking about a little bit earlier. Um, the Blaisdell yeah. Concert Theatre. Yeah. Mm. Went well? Very well, yeah. yeah. And, Very and, good. And now, what can we expect on the tour? What, what are we going to hear? What are we going to... Well, we what, Ronnie put the format together, the song list. We, we do a one hour, have a 20-minute break, and then we do probably another 50 minutes or an hour. And the song combination is very good. That's Very value, nice. people. That's value. An hour and then a break. Yeah. And then, you know, this is not yeah, get yeah, on. We, we don't want to kill off, ourselves. You know? we just, we're, we're still killing ourselves. <laughs> we can still last that long. I'll put it that yeah, way. Yeah, I'll okay, put it that way. <laughs> we're going to get your hits. You know, your, the, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah I do, I do oh, my, yeah. my main song, Cheryl yeah. Moana Marie, If Only Had Time, Hush Not Order to Marry, Tania, which is a couple we've got to put in by Saturday, but they're very straightforward and people know them in New Zealand. I, do. I didn't do them in Hawaii, that Hush Not A Word To Mary and Tania, because they don't really know that they still love Cheryl Moana Marie. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. well, I don't think it's unbelievable, it's a great number. Well, it, it was a big song in Hawaii for me when I was at the Royal Hawaiian, and they've not forgotten. They haven't I, I read about, you know, you writing one for your sister and then another one for your sister. And yeah, I wrote a song for all yeah. of my sisters, yeah. five of them. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Kathleen was the last one. Unfortunately, she passed on um, last August, mm -hmm. but she was the last one I wrote a song for called Kathleen. It's on, it's on my new album. Are we talking this album? Yeah, that one. Yeah. This is the album. So we've got um, John's The Greatest Song of All, which is John with an acoustic touch, an acoustic touch. Um, so they're not all acoustic, are they, John? Not all, but some of them are. I did a cover of Elvis, I Love Me Tender, with the acoustic guitar, there's a, quite a few acoustic guitars on there, just, just myself. And this is the traditional way of buying a down, down CD. You can get this at the live concerts, yep. Uh, at the live concerts, yep. yep. And I haven't had time enough to put it put it on the net, you know? Okay. I haven't had time yet, but I will. If I only had only time. Had time. <laughs> if I only, I just couldn't resist throwing yeah, that, yeah. that one in. <laughs> so let's talk about the tour. Um, you're going to, now where are you going? You've, you've done Christchurch, you're going to New Plymouth, mm. you're going to Palmy, Wellington, Hamilton and Auckland. So really, the whole country, Christ, the South Island's got a chance already and uh, the whole of the North Island's got a chance to see you. Well, this guy next to me, going to cause, I hope he doesn't cause an earthquake. 
with his, with his classic, um, well, mainly the um, 2001 Odyssey, which is just great. I mean, he knows all about that. I mean, he's probably tired of saying, playing it, yeah. <laughs> playing it by now, but that's his initial. Do, you, do the TCP team, do you, you're still close? You're still, you know, all oh, of yeah, you, you yeah. know, the whole Elvis sort of, everyone was around that time, you still stay in pretty close touch? We, we stay in generally pretty close touch because we're a still... a big area, though, where Yeah, live. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's massive. One's in Louisiana, and <laughs> Glenn D and I are still in the Nashville area, and James uh, was in, like I said, in Louisiana. So anyway, yeah, we do. We, we still try to do some projects together. And, and, and John, um, a, cu- a couple of years back, I mean, I remember you did, you had the book, you did Dancing with the Stars, and then I thought you were... I never thought you'd, you'd retire. I mean, retirement's a dirty word. But I thought you were, I didn't think we'd see you tour again. I thought no, it was a farewell kind of. I was. Uh, tell me about Trying that. to cut back a bit, yeah. then, because um, after a while, you know, you're traveling and you're doing this in next town, next town, next city. Yeah. Um, I just decided to just lay back and just do a few things, uh, you know, in, in six months or something, or whenever I wanted to. But. Um, after a while, if it's in your blood, like Ronnie says, you sort of look at you. I prefer, if I'm going to die, <laughs> I'd rather do it on stage. <laughs> not not <laughs> sitting at home looking at the mirror. Yeah, that's the mirror. Amen to that. I've always said that. I want to go back, just fly back on the, st- on the drum set, <laughs> fall forward or fall back. Either way, <laughs> make sure you hit, the make sure hit something when yeah. I went down. You know? <laughs> if you're yeah. going to, yeah. yeah. I think there are a lot of people watching who are very glad that neither of you are even contemplating not performing anymore. No, we, ju- we just keep doing it until the time comes. Well, at home, you've got a chance to... Uh, to join the audience and, and see the show in um, in Hamilton or in Auckland. We're going to do a giveaway. We've got a couple of double passes to give away. All you've got to do is send in an email to Gerard at the beat goes on and you just got to put live legends in the subject line. So Gerard at the beat goes on, live legends in the subject line and we'll give away a couple of double passes for each show. And I've got to say, uh, legends is the absolute word. Gerard, he really, really did pick the wrong week to be away. <laughs> it has been an absolute pleasure having you two guys in the studio. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It was an honor.